Downton Abbey follows the wealthy Crawley family through the years of 1912 to 1925. Robert Crawley, the Earl of Grantham, and his American wife, Cora, the Countess of Grantham, share three daughters, Mary, Edith, and Sybil. The family lives in their large estate, Downton Abbey, with many servants. But because they have no sons, the heir to their estate is a male cousin. Mr. Crawley was his lordship's cousin and heir to the title. Well, but I thought Lady Mary was the heir. She was a girl, stupid. Girls can't inherit. Everything changes when Patrick, the heir, dies aboard the Titanic, and thus the new heir to their title and estate is Matthew Crawley, a lawyer and distant cousin. Today we are going to talk about the fashion of the Crawley sisters and how what they wore expressed their characters. Starting with their undergarments, upper-class ladies would wear undergarments consisting of a chemise, which had the purpose of protecting the corset from direct contact with the body. Drawers, also known as knickers or pantaloons, were two separate leg pieces that joined at the front, but opened through the crotch area. They usually fastened in the back. Because of the popular silhouette, the drawers during the early seasons of Downton Abbey would be narrow compared to the wide-legged drawers of the early 1900s. Later in the decade, the combination became a popular alternative with young people. It combined a chemise and drawers. However, this was not considered appropriate to wear with an evening dress. While a corset was still worn, gone was the unnatural S-shaped figure of the previous decade. The 1910s saw a straighter and more natural figure rise in popularity. Undergarments also included a petticoat, cotton stockings, and lastly, a corset cover. To go to breakfast and for the first part of the day, young ladies would wear a morning dress, including a tailored blouse and a long skirt. Married women like Cora have breakfast in bed. In the first episode, we see the sisters wearing these morning dresses. Mary looks more mature in purple and gray, why Sybil's youthfulness is emphasized with her bright purple dress. We can also tell Sybil's age by her hair, which is worn down, showing she is a teenager. When girls entered adulthood, they would wear their hair up like Mary and Edith. Mary wears her hair in side swirls. It is significant that Mary and Sybil are both wearing purple with Edith in black. This reiterates that Edith is the odd one out, not only in appearance, she is blonde unlike her sisters and mother, but she is also an outcast in general in the family. Mary and Sybil have a closer relationship with each other than Edith, and Robert and Cora pay less attention to their middle daughter than they do to Mary and Sybil. Later in the day, the girls would be expected to change into afternoon dresses. Then, for tea time, the ladies would change into tea dresses. Due to changes in class structure and the decline of the aristocracy, World War I marked the end of the Edwardian tea gowns' popularity. Lastly, after a short rest, the three sisters would dress for dinner in evening gowns. During the late 1910s, silhouettes became straighter and more curveless. During the First World War, fashion became simpler and there was a focus on practicality. The war changed society drastically. Women began to enter the workforce and continued to work after the war. In the 1920s, undergarments worn by the Crawley sisters would include underbust corsets, which would be worn over a vest, cami knickers, or a step-in chemise. Another slip would also be worn over the corset. As for the clothes they would wear, they would start the day in day dresses. Later in the day, they would change into semi-formal afternoon dresses. The main difference between the day dress and the afternoon dress would be the absence of a collar. Afternoon dresses had a round boat neck or a high v-neck. Lastly, the women would change into evening gowns, which were different from the formal afternoon dresses because they were sleeveless. These dresses were also made with the more expensive fabrics and trimming. Beading was a very popular form of decoration. Now let's move on to the sister's personal style. Mary, the eldest sister, is often the main focus of the show. Mary most commonly wears red, which symbolizes sexuality, passion, and romance. 
The first season includes a scandal of Mary losing her virginity to a man who later dies in her bed. The early seasons also focus on the romance between Mary and Matthew. Red also symbolizes confidence and aggression. Mary can be insensitive and ruthless when trying to get what she wants, although her confidence and determination can be also be used for good. She manages to keep Downton afloat after many financial troubles. She also often wears other deep jewel tones. Jewel tones are named for the gemstones they take after, such as ruby, sapphire, and emerald. These gemstones were used to signify wealth and status, and their colors communicate the same thing. Mary is well aware of her wealth and beauty and uses it to her advantage. She is arguably her father's favorite child, and she certainly receives the most attention from both of her parents. Lastly, Mary wears black, which can represent power, elegance, and sophistication, but also evil, darkness, and despair. Mary deals with grief and despair throughout the show, and it humanizes her to the audience. Mary certainly has her dark side and can be mean-spirited and condescending, but you can't help but root for her. Poor old Edith. Poor Edith. Oh, poor Edith. In the early seasons, it appears that Mary has developed her own signature style, while Edith has not. Edith struggles to find her place outside of Mary's shadow and tries charity work, farming, nursing, and lastly, journalism. As the series moves to the 1920s, you can see Edith's style is differentiated from Mary's. Edith is often dressed in lighter colors and softer, more feminine silhouettes. We can also see this softness illustrated in Edith's hair, which is styled in Marcel waves as opposed to Mary's sleek bob. As seen in this picture, Edith is wearing a champagne-colored beaded dress with a floral motif while Mary has on a red dress with a geometric pattern. Edith's softer style represents her more sensitive personality. Edith's signature colors are gold, champagne, orange, and light blue and teal. Gold is associated with wealth, success, achievement, and triumph. This is extremely fitting for Edith in the later seasons as she has finally found happiness. She finds meaning through motherhood and a career and her happiness only increases with the entrance of Bertie into her love life. Bertie, Edith's husband, ends up becoming a Marquess, making Edith outrank her entire family, including Mary. Orange symbolizes feelings of excitement, enthusiasm, and warmth, but orange can also represent danger. Edith wears orange in season four when she starts working in London, a positive change in her life. However, she also wears orange in season five when she is in a bad place and is less concerned about fashion. Teal is a mix of blue and green that represents calmness, serenity, and strength. In one of Edith's most memorable outfits, she wears a teal dress on a dinner date with Michael Gregson. Here, outside of Downton, we finally see a confident and happy Edith. Last but not least, Sybil's style is less distinct than polar opposites Mary and Edith, but we can still gain a few insights from what she wears. Sybil often wears blue, which represents sensitivity, loyalty, and sincerity, perfectly fitting for her kind personality. Sybil's style is usually softer and more feminine compared to Mary's, but she is not afraid to take risks. In season one, Sybil shocks her family by wearing harem pants to dinner. These were inspired by designer Paul Poiret, a designer who created Eastern-inspired clothing for wealthy customers. Sybil is also the first sister to cut her hair, leading the way for Mary's big chop later in the series. I hope you gained a deeper understanding of the sister's style and can get extra enjoyment out of your Downton rewatches. Thanks. Bye.